Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Welcome to our weekly live call. Thank you for joining us. I'd love for you guys to share where you are joining us from in the comments. And for those of you who are new here, my name is Bola Shokunbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. Excited to have you here. And I'm going to have my amazing co-host, um, Yasmir, introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Yasmir. I'm one of the content creators for Clever Girl Finance, joining you from New York City. Yes. And so today we have a highly requested topic. Um, we actually got another email about this a couple of weeks ago. And this was talking about uh, catching up on your finances or starting up on your finances when you are not in your 20s and not in your 30s, right? So we're going to be talking about how to get ahead financially in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. And I just wanted to um, paraphrase this whole um, session by saying it's never too late to get started. And there is no specific age that should be tied to what you are able to accomplish. So um, regardless of what age you are, please be very open-minded about this. And it also, there is no shame in starting over. Uh, you know, people go through life, uh, different financial circumstances. And so, um, Again, we're talking about starting, uh, getting ahead financially in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. But this is applicable to everyone. So hello, those of you who are joining. I see Sonia. Hi, Portia. Um, hi, Andrea. We haven't seen you in a while. Hi, OKA. <laughs> hi, Jennifer in Los Angeles. Hi, Stance. Hello, Joyce. Thank you so much for joining us. As usual, before we get started, announcement. So we have over 30 plus completely free courses. If you haven't already checked out our, our courses, please check them out. They're completely free. Um, we have over 30 of them. There are a variety of topics uh, around personal finance, entrepreneurship, you know, investing, mindset and motivation. Uh, we also update our blog every single day. And one of the things that I keep forgetting to talk about on these lives is that we do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching here at Clever Girl Finance. So definitely stop by uh, the website to check out um, the coaching offering. Coaching is done by Esther. She's a certified coach. So if you need that guidance with setting up your financial plans, she has those coaching sessions in place. And of course, be sure to check out the Clever Girl Finance book series. You can see them back there. Um, there are four books, as you know, the first book, Ditch Debt, Save Money and Build Real Wealth, the investing book called Warrior Money, the Side Hustle Guide, and then my most recent book, Choosing to Prosper. And you can find all these books everywhere books are sold. You can find them uh, from your favorite online retailers, and they're available as ebook, audiobook, and physical books as well. Okay, so let's get into the topic, and I'm going to hand over to you, Yasmir. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, so you probably see headlines where um, it, they say like you, where you should be financially according to your age. And while some of these articles can be helpful, they can be terrifying, um, especially if you feel like you've fallen behind. But the good news is, as Bola mentioned, is that um, no matter where you are, it's never too late um, to catch up. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, ways that you can um, catch up so that you are where you want to be financially. And the key when you are starting over and you are a little old, older or you're just setting your financial plans is that key word that Yasnar said, right, catch up. Um, not catching up with anybody else. It's not a competition, <laughs> but catching up with where you want to be for yourself, right? Um, and setting those goals as to where you want to see yourself by the time you get to that age that you want to retire or you want to step back a bit from working full time or, you know, what are your goals around being able to achieve financial wellness? That's what the con concept of catch up means. It's not to catch up with your neighbors or your sister or your friends, your cousin. This is all about you. It's, it's personal to you. Yeah, so you want to get started with giving yourself a financial health check. So just as you go into your doctors for your like your annual checkup, you want to give your um, finances a health checkup as well. So you want to just take stock of any debts, um, expenses, and income and figure out uh, where you are now and where you want to focus your attention. Um, but while, while doing this, 
you know, we often fall into what uh, you were supposed to have saved or accomplished, um, you know, a, a few years ago or at a certain age. But don't think too much about what you should have done when you were younger, because we can't really change the past. But no matter what your financial situation is, it's about looking forward, making plans to um, get to where you want to be. And as Bola mentioned, we're not you know, in competition with, in, with anyone else. We just want to be where um, we are financially sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and doing that financial health check is really important. It's not a self-shaming thing. It's not to make you feel bad or embarrassed about where you are or are not. It's really just to give yourself an understanding of where am I now and where do I want to get to, right? It's like your car navigation or the navigation, your Apple Maps or Google Maps. If you don't allow it to identify where you where you are right now, if you don't put in your current location, it has no way of guiding you of where you're trying to go because it can't map out the directions from where you currently stand. So it's all about, okay, looking at where you are with your finances, right? Um, what, is, what are your debts? What are your expenses? Um, what goals do you have? Um, um, what other financial obligations exist um, in your life? Do you have insurance? Just looking at the big picture of your finances and saying, okay, this is where I currently stand. And then from there, being able to create the plan. Yes, so um, the first thing you want to prioritize is to build up your emergency fund. Um, emergencies can happen at any age. So uh, right now is a good time to prioritize um, your emergency fund. Um, if you are, especially if you are in your 40s and your 50s, you're likely responsible for children, aging parents, or yourself. Um, so it, it's a it's a very, very important to have the means for when an emergency arises. Mm -hmm. So having that emergency fund is something, like I mentioned earlier, this is content that is content that's applicable to everybody. And having that emergency fund is key foundational. So if you're in that space where, okay, I'm trying to get my finances together, I'm starting over, uh, you have people who depend on you, like you have children uh, at this age, you have parents who are aging, maybe you have parents you're a caregiver to, um, maybe you have, you know, other people in your family you're a caregiver to, or you're just trying to make sure that you're able to take care of yourself, it's really important to start putting emergency savings aside. Um, when you think about emergency savings, we're talking about the core essentials that you need to survive if push comes to shove, right? This means being able to pay for safe housing. This means being able to pay for transportation to get around. This means being able to pay for any core utilities that you need, your internet, your water, your electricity. This means being able to pay for medicines that you or your household might need. This is the we need to survive money that you start to put aside. And what you can do if you're starting over is you build a budget and we'll talk a little bit about budgeting later on, but you create this budget and as a line item on your budget, you're gonna say based on my current income, based on the current money I have coming in, I'm going to put X amount towards my emergency fund of my goal of X, right? So let's say you wanna save $10,000 as emergency savings. You decide how much you can afford to put aside every time you get paid and then based on how much you can afford to put aside how long will it take you to save um, we're going to talk about ideas to increase your income which is something that you want to focus on when you're trying to play catch up but having that emergency fund starting that emergency fund and starting to contribute contribute to it is very very important um, um, for everybody Yes, exactly. Um, and as Bola mentioned, um, we want to consider ideas to increase um, our income. So earning more money can help you accelerate your retirement goals um, and, and help you catch up. So um, just ask yourself, can you get a p better paying job? Can you do a part time job? Can does your schedule allow for that? Um, can you downsize some items? Um, those sort of questions will then enable you to see like, okay, I can bring this much income and put it towards um, my um, catch up or your retirement or whatever um, it is you want to um, accomplish. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to play catch up, you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, beyond, if you are healthy and you have the ability to do certain things to bring in income, even if it's temporarily, it is so worth it, right? Um, 
if you're able to get a part-time job, get a better paying job, downsize items in your kitchen, your closet, things that your kids left at home they no longer need uh, this is a great time to do it just so that you can bring in some extra income buffer emergency savings and then put money even towards your other financial goals it's all about the idea of accelerating things so that you can play catch up so that you know based on your plan you can get to where you want to be where you feel comfortably financially right um it's you know i, I think about when i was in my 20s and i had no kids <laughs> No kids, no financial obligations, no husband, no mortgage. And I always ask myself, you know, like, I mean, I was saving money, but like, I could have been doing so many more things. But you know what they say about hindsight? It's it's 2020. And so I try not to say what could I have been doing, but instead I just reflect on the things that I enjoyed about my life then. But now, you know, it's what can you do now to help yourself get ahead? So it's about dropping the regret, dropping the self-shaming. Don't allow anybody to shame you if you're starting over or you're like, oh my God, I feel like retirement is coming up soon. Um, or I have a kid's college to pay for. I want to help my child. And you don't really have much. There is no better time than now to get started, right? Uh, Jennifer said, I'm playing catch up in my 40s. The struggle is real. The struggle is real regardless of your age. <laughs> the key is, are you willing to participate in the struggle to see the results, right? To take the actions to see the results. So the struggle is real, right? Life is real. But um, again, going back to the point of considering ways to increase your income, it's all about being creative, right? It's all about, okay, how do I accelerate getting where I need to be? So that's, um, that's the second point. So building your royalty fund, considering ideas to increase your income is number two. And number three is to um, develop a retirement ASAP. And then this is for anyone um, at any age. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good idea to put thought into what you want your retirement to look like. So ask yourself key questions like, where do you want to retire? Um, when you would like to retire and how much you need to retire. Um, you can use a retirement calculator to estimate how much you will need um, to retire comfortably. Yeah, so go ahead. Go ahead, Yasmer. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, um, I just wanted to say like um, that the keyword is uh, what do you need to retire comfortably? Because um, people think that they, they're going to need millions um, to retire. And that's not the case because there's a lot of factors to consider, like where are you going to live? That might be a lower cost of living area. Um, you know, are you going to live um, on your own? Um, things like that um, you just have to take into consideration. So don't mm -hmm. feel like, oh my gosh, I'll never get to like a million dollars because it's going to be different for everyone. So, yeah, so the, you know, what the media typically perpetuates is that retirement, the goal is a million dollars, but it really depends on you as the individual, right? Some people don't need that much money to retire. And one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, this whole idea of creating a retirement plan, you hear this all the time, but especially when you're in that age, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's really important to take off those blinders and say, what is my plan for retirement? Because it's coming up for you faster than a 20 something year old, right? A 30 something year old. So what is your plan for retirement? And this is asking your questions, where do you plan to live? Because your cost of living is one of the biggest costs when it comes to retirement. Um, what are you gonna do about any potential medical expenses? Because as we all get older, health issues start to come into play. This is when you need to start exploring insurance, start making sure you're putting money aside, uh, start looking at living benefits associated to, ins to life insurance, medical insurance, looking at the big picture to really understand your plan. What is it gonna cost in the place that you want to live? How much on average a year is it going to cost you, right? Keep in mind that when you approach retirement, a lot of times you have fewer costs outside of healthcare, right? So we're all pray praying for good health, but outside of healthcare, you typically will have fewer costs in retirement because by this point, I'm giving you a scenario here, hopefully your kids are out of your house and they're independent and they're on their, their own. You're not paying children expenses. That is a huge, huge uh, bucket in a family's budget. At this time, if you have purchased a home, maybe your mortgage is paid off or close to being paid off. Not always the case for everyone, but again, this is just a scenario. Maybe your vehicle is paid off. Maybe you don't need a vehicle. Maybe you 
may not have paid off your mortgage, but you paid off a significant portion and you're able to downsize into a smaller home because your kids are no longer, no longer in the house. You don't need all of that space, right? Um, so you really want to start asking yourself these questions. What is your retirement plan? What do you want your retirement to look like so that you can start to plan financially? Another thing I want to point out is that God willing, having good health, most people who retire don't just sit down on their couch and watch TV all day. A lot of people who retire, uh, keeping in mind that retirement can average 20 to 30 years, you know, after age 65. So we're talking about that standard retirement age. Um, many people go on to have second careers, pursue passions, hobbies, start businesses. Uh, the retiree world is booming. And it's like these <laughs> aunties of mine, they have they have lives. Uh, my mom went back to start a second career at age 56. She started nursing school at 56, right? Um, so even if you're worried about being close to retirement and you don't have funds, as long as you have your health, you're likely not just going to sit around. You're still going to have plenty of time to, to work and save and invest, but you need to start laying out your plan. Even if you don't want to do that, you want to just relax, you need to lay out what is that retirement plan. So those are the questions you want to ask yourself. Where are you going to live? What is the cost of living in that place? How much do you imagine needing a year? $40,000 a year? $50,000 a year? Do you think you're going to work part-time? What about medical expenses? What type of insurance are you going to need to write all this stuff down? And it might feel a little bit overwhelming, but think about it this way. It'll be more overwhelming if you haven't established those plans um, and you just continue going day by day, day by day, saying, oh, my God, I have to catch up. I have to catch up. But you haven't really established the plans. The, over, the one or two hours of overwhelming, you sit down to write things down. Uh, it's so worth it, right? Because now you have a plan to work towards. And you're not alone in that overwhelm, right? A 20-something-year-old, a 30-something-year-old can be trying to figure out their finances and feeling a similar overwhelm because they're trying to figure things out. So I would say don't allow overwhelm to be the reason why you don't create your plans, to the reason why you allow yourself to stay stuck. Because a lot of that times that overwhelm might turn into negative energy. And then you start to say, if only I had done this in my 20s, if only I'd done this in my 30s, if only, if only, if only I didn't marry that person, if only I hadn't married that person. If we start going down this spiral, <laughs> we don't want that. We want to make our plans. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so the next tip is to leverage your 401k catch up contribution. So yes, this is a real thing. Um, so if your company offers a 401k, you probably been contributing to it. Um, but whether or not you have, um, you can contribute more in your 50s. Um, because of something called the catch up contribution. So anyone over the age of 50 can contribute an extra $7,500 to their 401k in addition to the normal limit, which is for 2023, $22,500. Yes. So this is a key opportunity for you to play catch up. So if you are employed, right, and your employer offers a 401k, Look at your budget and determine if you're able to, number one, max out that maximum contribution for 2022 of 2023 of 22,500, and then max out that catch up contribution, which is if you're over 50 years old, you can contribute an extra $7,500 into your 401k contribution. This is so worth it. Keep in mind that for a 401k, this is money that's coming out of your paycheck, um, pre taxes, right? Uh, so you might notice it in your paycheck afterwards, especially if you're trying to play catch up. But that reduced salary uh, in exchange for being able to catch up on investing is so worth it because that money that you're putting into your 401k, it's not just sitting around earning 0.01%. This is money that's actively working for you in the stock market based on how you choose to invest your money that has the ability to grow over, grow over time through the power of appreciation, compounding, and dividends. Keep in mind that I said earlier, retirement is, is not a day. You don't get to your retirement age 65 and then you drop dead. No, retirees, especially in the US, are living long. So even if you're starting at 50 something, 60 something, 
you are going to live an average 20, 30, 40 years more. That is time where money is still growing and investing and earning for you. That is time where you can build a legacy and create financial security for yourself in your older age, but also for whoever you choose to leave that money behind to. So um, don't get stuck that, oh, I'm 50. I, I can't contribute to a 401k. I'm 55. I'm 60. Every dollar you're able to save is worth while right if you are if you your employer does not offer a 401k aim to contribute to your ira traditional roth ira aim to max that out i believe it's 6500 for 2023 and there's a catch-up option if you're above 50 for a thousand dollars start with that as your goal right and then once you've met those 401k catch-up and roth i mean an ira catch-up contributions then you can open up a brokerage and even invest more that way keep in mind that uh uh, the brokerages, your earnings are, are taxable. But again, these are just ways to think about investing. I think one of the biggest con issues I see with investing, especially when it comes to people, to older people, right, um, is that they feel like they're, they're out of time. They don't have enough time. But there's so much life to live, right? Um, <laughs> I remember watching a, a documentary and an 80-something-year-old lady was listening to her daughter who was 50 something or 60 say that she was old. And she's like, girl, you are a kid. <laughs> so there's there is so much life to live. Um, I need us to stop living like we're about to die tomorrow, right? Um, because when you live like that, because you're assuming the worst, you don't take any action. So as part of this plan to catch up, go and explore what are your offerings at your employer? Are you contributing to a 401k? or four through B, whatever the employer offering is, are you maxing out? What steps can you take to start maxing out? What steps can you take to start making those catch-up contributions? Don't have a 401k, do you have an IRA? Are you contributing? What steps can you take to max out? And again, going back to the prior point of thinking of ways to increase your income, as you're increasing your income, that's money you can put towards investing for yourself. At this particular age, one thing I wanted to say is, for people who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, you're kind of in that middle sandwich age where many people will have kids on one side and elderly parents on another side that you feel obligated to, right? I would say if you feel like you're behind financially and you're in this middle age group, it's okay to say, hey, kids, you need to figure this out, right? They're educated, they have the ability to work, and they also have more time and more energy than you. Don't feel obligated to perpetually be paying your kids' bills, especially when your kids can stand on their own two feet. I know a lot of moms out there feel guilty, right? But if your child is, is done with school, they're out of school, they're 25 years old, come on, get a job, work. <laughs> You need to take up yourself for a little bit, focus on you for a little bit. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, and I'm, there's nothing wrong with helping your kids out, you know, but at the end of the day, they have t more time than you. They have more energy than you, right? They're young. They can work five jobs and, you know, sleep for two hours and get up and go back to it. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you need to worry about you for a second. Um, so let's just go back over what we covered. So building an emergency fund, um, considering ways to increase your income, developing, uh, creating a retirement plan for yourself, leveraging those retirement savings account catch-up contributions. Okay, so let's keep going. Yes, number five is to come up with a retirement budget now. So um, even if you plan to um, spend less in retirement, it's a good idea to practice living on that retirement budget now. So how much do you think you will need a year based on your current investments and um, what you'll have? There are like online calculators that you can use that can that can help calculate that number um, and then break that down into um, monthly or biweekly um, amounts to determine what budget what that budget will look like. Mm -hmm. um, but keep in mind, as Bola mentioned earlier, uh, most retirees um, don't retire 100%. They're still like working part time, they're getting second careers, they're working on uh, a passion project. Um, so, and also, too, as Bola mentioned, like retirement can last an average of 20 to 30 years. Um, so, it's, it's good to be 
to have that number down and also like practice living on that budget because then that can help you determine like okay do i need to make adjustments like if it, if this is too little for me to live off of like let me contribute more or if this is like well i don't know there's nothing wrong with having too much so <laughs> i think you'll be okay <laughs> yes and I just want to answer a couple questions before I add to what you said, Yasmir. Mm -hmm. First of all, happy birthday, Amira. She's going to be 60 on Saturday and out of debt except for her mortgage. That is incredible. And then I saw Jennifer ask, uh, since I'm paying off debt, I contribute 1% to my 401k. Is that a good amount for now until I get into a better financial status? I would say that if your employer offers you a match, contribute enough to get that max. That max that they're... That, contribute enough to get that match if your employer offers you a match <laughs> that match is 100 percent free money and it is worth it keep in mind that when you're contributing to your 401k you're contributing pre-tax dollars so if you get an online calculator a 401k contribution calculator and you put in increasing your contribution to receive that match on the other side, after taxes, when you get your, your paycheck, it's not going to be as much of a difference as you think it will be. So, you know, people always say, can I pay off debt and save at the same time? I would say yes, especially if you're getting free money. You want to get that all the free money you're, you're getting because this is money that is not just going to sit in a bank account and get killed by inflation. This is money that's going to go to work for you while you're sleeping. It's going to get dividends, appreciation, grow by the power of compounding over the long term. So I would say increase that contribution to whatever your employer match is, right? Um, and even if they don't have a match, set a goal for 5%, 5%. And see, up, see what you can give up on the other side after you get tax and get your paycheck to make up that 5% without impacting your debt repayment. I bet you you're going to find ways to do it. Like you will find ways to make up that that four percent difference, and it's not going to be as much money as you think. So I just wanted to say that. And there was one other comment I wanted to to, to add to, and then I'm gonna go back and talk about what you said about the budget. Sonia said, "Living a frugal lifestyle saves you a lot." Yes. So one of the things you want to do as you're playing catch up is, you know, we talked about increasing your income, but where in your current budget, based on what you're earning now, are there opportunities for you to cut back and save a bit more, right? So you might be looking for the part-time job. You might be looking for the better paying job. You may be downsizing things in your home, but based on what you're earning today, what you know for a fact is coming into your bank account each time you get paid, what can you do? What can you do to cut back a bit more so you can save a bit more? Again, you're sacrificing here so that you can catch up, accelerate on being able to meet your personal goal of feeling financial comfort of where you want to be at your current age. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and I see tons of comments. Uh, thank you for, for uh, sharing your thoughts. Uh, we'll share that on screen soon. Lots of birthday wishes for you, <laughs> Amira. Um, OK, so Yasma mentioned coming up with a retirement budget. So one of the things I said earlier is that when you are in retirement, the hope, the goal is that your expenses are less because those big expenses that you may have had when you were younger are out of your life. For example, student loan debt, um, car, motor vehicle, your, I mean, uh, a mortgage, your kids no longer being home. Those are all like, if you add up the costs of raising a child, <laughs> it goes into the hundreds of thousands of dollars across one's working life. Then you have multiple children, that's multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars too. Because by the time you pay for activities, food, house, you know, housing, care, um, education, that money adds up. So that's a big expense that you drop if you do have kids. Uh, Amira just mentioned she's close to paying off her mortgage, or you might have built equity in a home that you bought while you were younger. You can take that equity downsize into a smaller home. So your expenses are likely, hopefully, or you should aim to ensure that they are lower, right? So when you think about a retirement budget, let's say your current budget for every year right now for your family with kids is like $100,000. This is just an example. I don't have any statistics to support this. But in retirement, let's say you're like, you know what? We're going to move to a cheaper city. My kids are going to be out of the house. We're going to downsize into a, a smaller apartment because we don't need all the space. So my budget, after I run my calculations, is going to be $40,000. Can you live on $40,000 today? 
how can you make that happen? And this is, again, this is not something that you have to do. This is something that you can try to do so that that extra money, you can find ways to save it. Or you can aim that every year you're going to start to train yourself to live on a lesser budget so you can put more money aside. So your retirement budget, again, one of the other things I said earlier is that even if you're not going to have you don't think you're going to have all the money you want to have in retirement by the time you get to your retirement date. Retirement is not a day. Retirement is a whole phase of life. It's a whole next phase of life, which means I mentioned also earlier, most people do not retire and just sit down and look. You'll get bored out of your mind. My mom became a nurse. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I have so many aunties who started business who started doing different things. And like, they're, comp they're just, a, it's a whole new world out there. It's so interesting um, to see. Um, so don't be discouraged. You know, if you run calculations, like, oh, wow, I wanted to have $500,000 saved, but I'm only going to have 300. It's okay. You're going to be working. You're going to be, you know, pursuing things. You're going to be putting money aside. So don't be discouraged about that, but come up with a budget of what you think you're going to be spending on an annual basis in retirement. Can you start to live on that budget now? For some people, it might be completely unrealistic because you still have, you're still actively paying some big bills, but it's just something to keep in the in the back of your mind. Okay, when my child is done with college that I'm paying for, when my child is done with certain expenses, that's money that I can now put towards this goal. Uh, we plan to pay off our house by this date, or you know what, we're going to sell this house, take the equity, put it into a smaller house by this date, or I, you know, I'm going to sell my business. Uh, when I retire, I'm going to get a big um, retirement package, right? I can put that towards my investments and savings. So just start to think about what your retirement budget is going to look like. So somebody mentioned, so Alex said, what if Social Security runs out? Is it wise to think I could live off of my investments? Um, my mom gets a Social Security check, and I think it was $700 before, and now it's $1,100. It's, it's not a lot to live on. So when you're creating your financial plans, think of Social Security as a nice to have, but not a guarantee, right? Uh, don't create your plans around any any, I, I wouldn't call this a handout because this is money that we're all actively contributing to as taxpayers, but don't base your retirement plan on base, based on what the government is, is going to supposedly give you because we, we, we are hearing that Social Security is going to run out. So for this focus, we're talking about what you can do personally to secure yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's the next segue to the next tip is to delay collecting Social Security and understand your benefits. So it's worth learning how Social Security works and how to get um, the most of what you are entitled to. So in general, you can start collecting Social Security at 62, um, but you can wait until full retirement age, which is 65 or 67, so that you can get a larger benefit. However, everyone's um, situation is different. For some people, it'll make more most sense to um, collect those benefits at 62. But if you can wait until age 70, you'll get the most out of your benefit. And if you want to learn more about Social, social Security, uh, we recommend that you visit the website ssa.gov. Mm -hmm. So my mom now is 72. No, my mom now is 72. Um, and she waited until she was forced to start getting her payments. And initially they were $700 a month. And then they realized, so when you, as you're planning your retirement area, looking at the ssa.gov um, um, website, make sure that you, you check what your statements, what your payments are going to be, especially if you're closer to getting Social Security. So my mom's payments, I think were like $700 or $800, something like that. And then about recently this year, um, they realized that they had been underpaying her by for the last two or three years since she started getting the benefits and they sent her a check for like ten thousand dollars and she had no idea because she had never been checking the statements <laughs> because my mom was like this payment is a joke anyway it's not a, i keep telling like it's not a joke that's ten thousand dollars you have what are you gonna do and she's like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so check your statements and again you can wait to you can delay collecting your benefits if you don't have to right if you're working you have enough money you feel comfortable and then you get a bigger check uh, but make sure you look at what your specific benefit payment should be. Uh, and again, there are calculators online you can use to run your numbers. And then leverage the government website, SS, 
ssa.gov um, to, to confirm this. So it's important, again, understand where your social security benefits are going to be. And then if you are able to delay collecting them until you know the required age of 70, Otherwise, you can start collecting them at either age 65 or 67. There are some clauses around when you were born. Um, <laughs> and this is all on the ssa.gov website that determines if you start to get your benefits at 65 or 67. Um, so and that's another thing to think about. Yes, and lastly, um, we just want to talk, mention um, other considerations um, to, that you might want to explore. So such as um, a life insurance with living benefits, so like health care coverage and cash value, um, disability insurance, health insurance, um, et cetera. Uh, there are life insurance options for seniors and mature adults, including um, term and permanent life policies. Yes. Um, Yasmin, hold on one second. <laughs> Sorry, someone has been trying to call me multiple times. <laughs> I just needed to answer to let them know. So yeah, other considerations that are really important when it comes to um, planning for your retirement are definitely, definitely uh, looking into insurance, right? When you get to, um, as you get older, right, it's important to have insurance because health issues come into play. Um, we, we don't hope for them. We don't pray for them. The whole idea is that we maintain healthy lifestyles so as we get older, remain healthy. But as we get older, you know, we, we can fall ill. So you just want to understand what kind of health coverage you need or what health coverage you, coverage you need to get life insurance, health coverage, disability insurance, et cetera, start to explore them. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, I'm too old to get health insurance. I've heard a 40 something year old say, I'm too old to get uh, life insurance. I'm too old. No, you are not. It will cost you a little bit more, but that extra cost you pay is dependent on your age, but it is still worth it. Um, my insurance guy gave me an example of his wife got cancer and they happened to have life insurance that had living benefits that had healthcare coverage. And she had a bill, hospitable bill come at the end of it all, that was multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. And because they had that living benefit in their insurance that had the healthcare coverage aspect, they were able to get a significant amount covered and keep their retirement plans intact. That is a big deal. Um, some life insurance off offer cash value benefits where they'll pay you out cash depending on the type of life insurance. Um, disability insurance, if you get injured at work, you're unable to work, right? Uh, so you still have income coming in it's really important to explore these things. Do not dismiss them because you think it's gonna cost you $200 more, $500 more. In the grand scheme of your retirement plan, the extra cost is worth it, especially if you have underlying health issues, you have a history of certain health issues in your, in your family, uh, that's health insurance. If you are someone who your family really relies on your income, having the right life insurance, you wanna leave a legacy to your kids. Listen, many wealthy people, right, despite their wealth, they still leverage life insurance as an additional way to transfer legacies to their children, right? To um, the people that matter in their lives. So explore those options. For everything that we have covered, please do not tell yourself, I'm too old to, to, to do this. There's no age to do this. There is no age. You're not too old to be successful, right? There are so many, so many, so many stories of women who have started later in life and are massive successes, have been able to build wealth for themselves, for their families, and get into a place where they feel comfortable, right? Whether you're in your 40s, whether in your 50s, whether you're in your 60s, your 70s, it is not too late. If you need to have a conversation with your mom, your aunties, have the conversation, um, you know, and just take the blinders off, right? There's this whole shame game that I, I just, I really dislike, especially when it comes to women about, um, we just, we, we shame ourselves into taking zero action. And that's the worst thing that we can do. Because when you take new, no action, there are zero results, right? And the overwhelm remains. So um, I just want to go back and answer some questions. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer said, I'm feeling so motivated to keep moving forward. Sometimes I feel embarrassed as a 44-year-old, not where I, I'm supposed to be financially. Listen, no, uh, no, there's no shame. There's no, 44 is young. 44 is young. <laughs> 
Okay, so there's no shame here. It's all about what you know now and what action steps you're going to take to move forward. Listen, your life can change for the better in the blink of an eye, right? I'm not saying that you should go out and play the lottery, but if you take consistent steps over the next six months, consistent steps over the next 12 months, between now and December 31st, right? Give yourself this year to just take some certain steps. When you get to that date and you look back, you'll be surprised at what that consistency and discipline did in terms of changing your life. So no shame here. There's no embarrassment here, none whatsoever. Um, Nell said I look like I'm 25. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so Jennifer mentioned what insurance companies would I recommend and which are good companies. So, um, you know, I don't really recommend insurance companies, but I would say go with the reliable names. There are many, many insurance scams out there. So I would say looking at the big companies first, starting with the MetLife's, the Nationwide's, the State Farms, they all have a variation of options uh, there. That's what I would recommend. Um, again, tons of insurance scams. And so when there is a field that has, I'm not an insurance specialist, you know, just to put that out there. When there is a field that has a, a high level of scam, I tend to go with big reputable because then I have that peace of mind. So that's my suggestion. Yasmin, did you want to add anything? I just wanted to add um, that, you know, this, this is part of personal finance and it is personal. So just remember, like, don't compare yourself to others. Um, everyone's situation is different. Just focus on yourself. Yes and what you need. Yes, yes, focus on yourself. Focus on you. You are your own competition. You are the person you want to you know deal with deal with you. Um, and again, we're covering we're talking about content about, you know, where you are in if you're trying to catch up, you're trying to get ahead, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, but there's no age for this. Whatever your age is, just start now. There's also no shame in wanting to do well with your finances, none whatsoever. So um, Stacey mentioned something about insurance. Term life insurance is cheaper and offers more coverage for the cost. The issue with term life is that you get to a point and then the term is done and then you have no more insurance right so you get a term life insurance for 20 years but when you get to the 20th year maybe you get it at 40 when you're 60 the insurance is done and then at 60 it's even much much more expensive to get whole life however term life is still a good option right the other thing i want to say about insurance is this is a mindset shift i want you guys to consider right when you have built your own financial security insurance is an added benefit not something you rely your whole life on does that make sense if you start investing you start saving you start putting money aside you build this buffer where you have insurance as an added benefit in your life and not as oh my god i need insurance because i have no life without having insurance and you start you start looking for money to pay for this insurance so there are people who have built significant wealth that, you know what, they don't need the insurance, certain insurances, because they have money in the bank to cover it. So insurance is a backup. It, it helps protect your assets because you're paying this fee in the event that something goes wrong, right? It covers you. But at the same time, while you're paying the fee in the event that something goes wrong, God forbid, I want you to still be securing yourself. Your, having insurance is not a financial plan. It's just a part of it's, it's a nice to have part of your financial plan. You still need to secure yourself. You don't want to wait for something bad to happen as the only way you can get money. We don't want that. We want to be able to get the money when we need the money because we need the money because we feel like we want to have the money. <laughs> So you need to insure yourself. So Dahlia gave a really good example. Term life is like renting, permanent is like owning. Yeah, so think about it. Think about it that way. And then one other thing I wanted to mention was a question from Jennifer. And she said, I uh, can't find this now, but she was talking about where to invest. So if you're not familiar with investing, definitely check out our free investing course on clevergirlfinance.com. But uh, a big recommendation is just to put your money in index funds, right? Uh, total market index fund, which spreads your investment across the total US stock market. That is a great way to minimize risk and just 
uh, well diversify your portfolio across different industry classes, different asset classes, different companies as you learn about insurance. Don't say, oh, I don't know where to invest. I don't know how to invest, so I'm not going to invest anything. Start with a broad index fund. Many of your 401ks will have such an offering or some type of fund. Uh, you can invest that way in your traditional IRAs, your Roth IRAs, in your own brokerage as well. So don't let uh, the lack of knowledge be the keep you stuck. What don't you know? And how can you find the information so you can take the action? So I hope you guys enjoyed this session. <laughs> Uh, we try to cover as much as possible. I know there are tons of questions around this topic, but hopefully this is a good foundational point for you to take and feel motivated uh, to go out and take action. I hope we've been able to motivate you and empower you. Um, again, there is no shame and no judgment here, right? It's all about what steps do we take moving forward. So thank you. Check out the books. <laughs> Everywhere books are sold. Audible. Uh, Amazon, your local bookstore, ask your library to order it. Please support us. Check out our one-on-one -on -one coaching offering on the website, clevergirlfinance.com slash coaching. We have over 30 plus free courses. We have the Clever Girls Know podcast. We have so many resources to support you. And of course, this YouTube channel, there are videos with me you'll see every Sunday. And then there is a live that we do here every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please spread the word. Tell your friends about it. <laughs> and then if you have topics, drop them in the comments below. If you have things you want us to discuss, we have a few topics that um, folks have told us they want to discuss next week. I forget what it was, Yasmin, or was it? Yes, SS brought up this topic. It was how to deal with success. Because we've been seeing people just talking all kinds of way when they see people doing well, making them feel guilty for being successful, for getting that promotion at work, for starting that business, for saving that money. And we're not going to have that. So we're going to talk about how to deal with success, especially when your haters start to hate. So <laughs> we'll see you all next week. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye.